Hundreds of protests are planned across the country today against President Trump's immigration policy. Social justice groups are demanding that the administration end all family separations and detention policies and reunite families who were previously separated. Now, the main event marches through the streets of D.C. and ends in front of the White House. Here with me to talk about it, CNN contributor and former director of the Office of Government Ethics, Walter Schaub. Uh, Walter, thank you again for being with us. So uh, I know that you are going to be uh, involved in today's immigration protest in D.C. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But I do want to talk about something that uh, the president has just tweeted about, and that, of course, is ICE. We know that uh, some agents, some former, some ICE agents actually sent a letter to HHS secretary uh, as they were advocating that uh, ICE in some capacity be dismantled based on the practices that are being uh, put into place right now by the administration of separation of family. Uh, the president is tweeting right now, the Democrats are making a strong push to abolish ICE, one of the smartest, toughest, and most spirited law enforcement groups of men and women that I've ever seen. I watched ICE liberate towns from the grasp of MS-13 and clean out the toughest of situations. They're great. To the great and brave men and women of ICE, do not worry or lose your spirit. You are doing a fantastic job of keeping us safe by eradicating the worst criminal elements. So brave. The radical left Dems want you out. Next, it will all uh, police. Next chance, it will never happen. Zero chance, it will never happen. Okay, so this is what the president is saying. But again, as I said, there are ICE agents who sent a letter to the HHS secretary saying something does have to change. What do you make of all of this this morning? Well, I think a lot has to change. Um, I do think the president is engaging in a bit of distraction here, sleight of hand, because the focus of today's march is to reunite these families and end family detention. And this comes from policies that go all the way up to the top to him. Uh, and so the changes can be made by him and they can be made instantly and that doesn't have to involve the dismantling of an agency to achieve it. Now in addition, as these ICE agents point out, there are significant problems in ICE. There's a culture problem. I've dealt with ICE for years. I used to have clients who worked there. Um, but. Um, Again, I think what happens is he sets up a straw man and, and things like, oh, well, everybody marching today must want open borders and must love MS, MS-13. Well, that's nonsense. What we're interested in is children and babies and families uh, being ripped apart. And then when they're ordered to get back together, are going to be detained together indefinitely. And that's even assuming they can get back together because this government has been so non-transparent, we don't have any evidence that they even are going to be able to put them all back together. Yeah, there, there was actually a note this morning some reporting that the government never really had a specific plan to reunite uh, those families. Uh, once they were once they were um, put into custody after after crossing the border, uh, I do want to read real quickly from the uh, ICE agent's letter to HHS secretary. They wrote, "Investigators have been perceived as targeting undocumented aliens instead of the transnational criminal organizations that facilitate cross-border crimes, impacting our communities and national security." If I'm understanding this correctly, and help me out with this, Walter, if uh, you understand it the same, it sounds to me as though they're saying. This practice is distracting them from the true focus of criminals, which is, is, I think, the point you were making. It doesn't have to be dismantled fully, but there are parts of it that are broken. How significant is it, however, to have agents who are in ICE calling for some sort of change here? Yeah, well, I think an analogy would be, imagine if your local town police said, we are going to devote every resource we have, every man and woman working for our police force is going to stand there and make sure people come to a complete stop at stop signs instead of having their wheels roll slightly before they take off again. Uh, and then as a result, murders and bank robberies and other things are under investigated. Uh, that's an analogy to what's happening right now with, with this situation of zero tolerance you're pouring all of your resources into terrorizing families. And I say terrorizing because they've admitted their goal is deterrence, do something bad enough to these people that others won't come. And as a result, you're pulling off 
resources about the very thing he's setting up as the thing we should be afraid of. So he's actually making the danger greater for Americans by pulling the resources off of the really dangerous individuals and not pri prioritizing uh, people who are actually committing crimes and instead terrorizing young children and babies and families. It's absolutely insane. It's backwards. And frankly, aside from being cruel and unjust, it's dangerous. You wrote a piece uh, in Slate saying ultimately the burden to ensure that these families are reunited and kept safe falls on the public to pick up where our leaders have failed. Uh, what's needed now is pressure, you write. We saw Maxine Waters, Congresswoman, advocating for pressure as well. Let's listen. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And as you know, she's gotten a lot of pushback for that. She's even received death threats. What kind of pressure do you advocate? What do you think could actually uh, exert some change here? Right. I mean, my article had nothing to do with what Maxine Waters said and didn't mm -hmm. sound anything like hers. Right, uh, right. What I'm talking about is exactly what we're doing today. There are 750 protests going on across the country. Hundreds of thousands of people have registered and nobody registers for a march. They should, but n a lot of people don't. And so I think the real numbers are going to be much, much larger. And that's what's needed because here we are having this human rights crisis artificially created by our president and our Congress decides that what's really needed is an emergency hearing on the world's most investigated emails of an individual who hasn't been in government for five years. And why are they doing that? To distract us from the human rights crisis that the leader of, of our country has created. And so what we have to do with Congress abdicating its responsibility and with the Supreme Court about to belong to the president, uh, the only third remaining check on executive power is the people and the people need to show up they need to protest they need to vote they need to make their voices heard and that's precisely what we're going to be doing around the country today mm -hmm. yeah there are so many of these rallies and we know that you will be there in Washington for that one Walter Schaub thank you so much sir we appreciate your insight thanks